Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, your host. And uh, today we are going to talk about intuition um, versus the mind. So uh, I've been asked to talk about this. Uh, uh, I think it was Cecilia who brought it up to me and that was like a month ago she asked me to talk about the difference between the voice of our intuition versus the voice of our mind and uh, and that's an interesting topic um, I'm going to talk about that and bring some light in this area and we go from there and see where the conversation is going to take us to because uh, as a lot of you know that uh, a lot of times uh, I start talking about a particular topic and then um, we end up going somewhere else. So since everything is life, it's intuitive and this whole thing has a mind of its own and it will do its whatever it wants to do. It's beyond my control, which is really, really wonderful when you are just um, operate from this no mind, this silence place, the space of silence, and then that which has created all takes over and it does what it wants to do. So it's diff very diffic difficult a lot of times for me to do things premeditated. I have an idea of what I want to talk about and I try to go that in that direction. But then the great mind takes over and and channels and and whatever wants to happen will happen. And that is a part of the way of diving into the self and relaxing into the moment and allowing the moment, allowing that which is always here, which is present to operate through us and uh, remind me if I do forget today please remind me that after initially talking about our topic I like to point out something very simple to you for those of you who may be struggling or having a hard time understanding the nature of the absolute, of how you can dive into the greatness, the vastness, even momentarily uh, going beyond the mind and operating from the vastness without this great event of, let's say, enlightenment or awakening. It may not be your every moment experience, but you can get a very good glimpse of it by a simple way of um, diving into what I'm going to suggest to you later on. So remind me to, to talk about it if I do forget. For the very present moment, let's do a simple meditation, which basically Meditation should be simple, it should be easy, it should come naturally to you. It should never be something that, it shouldn't be a, a, a chore, like I need to go and meditate. And trying to meditate. It should be a natural event, natural occurrence that happens because meditation is our natural inherited space which is available and we all operate uh, at times meditatively however we're not aware of it or we don't have any training about it of how to live life meditatively and basically when you do go through a complete self-realization or you're in a transition to self-realization and it does start to click 
click for you, you realize that your life becomes meditation and meditation takes over and every moment of your life becomes meditation because you're here, you're present and you operate from this moment instead of going into the past or going to the future. Being here and now being present with this moment, which should not be an effort, it should be a very natural phenomena, is meditation. So the true meditation is just basically being here and now, being present. Everything else we do is to direct us to this. So when I do sit and do a formal meditation, whatever act I do, whatever position I take, and I try to go beyond my thinking mind to come to this place, it is a preparation for the true meditation. It is not the real meditation. The actual real meditation is simply being present in this moment and being one with whatever you're doing. That is the real meditation. Everything else is to prepare you to come to that point and to unclutch from a lifetime of conditioning. And I did talk about it, uh, I think it was a month ago or a couple months ago that I talk about meditation, uh, which is not an action. So if you feel compelled, maybe you go to my podcast or uh, our previous videos and then find that particular uh, podcast or, or YouTube video and watch it once again. So the reason I'm saying this is I would like to simplify meditation for you. I would like to take the myth part of it away and create a way to help you to naturally dive into your natural state, which doesn't require to do anything for it. But since the mind is conditioned, and we have been bombarded, conditioned, beaten up in our head all the time, psychologically and as far as conditioning goes. Majority of people on the planet, they have a hard time just being present in this moment. So, you just take a deep breath and you relax and you just dive into where you're at. Dive into this moment. And whether you want to close your eyes and you keep your eyes open, and that doesn't matter either. Because true meditation doesn't require you closing your eyes or keeping your eyes open. True meditation is diving within yourself and being here now. Simply, you are here, and if you do get engaged with whatever the moment present, pre, uh, presents to you, whatever that is, maybe a couple cats are fighting with each other and there's noise there, so your attention goes to them. Maybe an airplane is flying over your head and your attention goes to the sound of the airplane. Or someone is cutting grass, the neighbor is cutting grass and you're hearing the sound of it. That's fine. Your attention goes into a particular direction, but you're here. You're not dwelling on the past and you're not worrying or calculating about future. You're simply in this moment, here and now. That is meditation.
So meditation doesn't really have different looks, a certain look. The real meditation, it doesn't have a form, a definition. It simply is. It's a natural way of being. So don't try to get it with your head. Use the information you're receiving. But simply disconnect from whatever you're doing right now and just hang out in this moment. Just hang out here. Just be with me and be with the collective. Simply here and now, whether you want to close your eyes or not, and that's fine too. Whether you want to change your position or not, that's okay. But just hang out in this moment without an agenda, without trying to go anywhere, without trying to accomplish anything. Because I understand you can get lost into trying to quiet your mind or trying to dive into the heart for a moment, don't try anything. Just be here with me. And see what happens. Just be available without any expectations, without any big bangs, without trying to create an experience or reaching out to another dimension. Simply Exercise your natural state being here. If you do have pets, if you have a cat or a dog or a bird in your home, watch them. Pay attention to them and see. A lot of times they're just hanging out in this moment. They're not trying to get anywhere or do anything. They're simply here. And they can be great of a they can be great teachers to us. If you feel like you have a busy mind, for a moment, relax into allowing busyness to be. If it's busy, just relax into it. Let it be busy. Simply, you are aware of a busy mind. And if you just relax into that, you will see that even a busy mind will disappear.
if you have strong emotions rising within you, just for a few seconds, relax into that uncomfortable pressure or apparent emotion that appears. Just try to relax into that instead of pushing it away. You just dive into that. Allow it to be. Allow it to pass through you.
slowly, slowly come back. See, when you don't try and you don't have an agenda and you're simply stepping back and you come to your natural state, you're not trying to do this, you're not trying to do that, and you're simply you're taking one step back into yourself and you're like, okay, I'm here. And you're present. And all of a sudden, it, you disconnect from the world of the mind. You disconnect from the world of expectations that something needs to happen or I need to get to a place. And you come back to your natural state. You're here, you're present, but there is no agenda. And in that shift of not having an agenda, you simply are, all of a sudden vastness takes place. Vastness appears. And you tap into this greater part of yourself, which is here. which is formless and timeless. It's simply here. It's so simple, it's extremely simple, and it's so available that we have a tendency on missing it because it's so close to us that we are literally every moment of life we're swimming into it yet because it's so available and it's so transparent that we miss it and we are projecting it that it's somewhere else so it gets postponed the experience gets postponed to a future time rather than the recognition of that which is already here. And it creates a lot of frustration for the spiritual seeker because we associate it with something we need to do, which all the stuff we do and all these great teachers have created all these different techniques or methods are simply pointing out to bring us to this very simple space which we're already residing in but somehow we feel like this is not good enough and it's got to be something else and then you go through this cycle of years and years of practice but at the very end, you come to this place and you realize that it was always here and you were always in it, yet you didn't realize it. And you had to go through 30, 40 years, 50 years of spiritual struggle to recognize that which was you were looking for was always within your own self and it was always here. And even in this moment I'm saying it, I know that a lot of people don't believe it or they can't accept it. I know the mind will come and say, no, there is something more. But believe me, it's super, super simple. It's beyond simplicity.
and it shows its clarity and its presence in the absence of your thinking mind. The moment you're not engaged with your thoughts, you get an experience of it. So I'll come back to this again and talk about it. The intuitive knowing and the mind. The power of your intuition, the voice within you. It's easy quite often for the spiritual seeker, the spiritual warrior, um, it gets, it could be confusing and it gets misinterpret, uh, there's a misinterpretation of egoic uh, knowing that I've seen that over and over again, and I have done it myself, but I've seen it with thousands of different people who have come to my retreats or workshops or I've worked with them, that they fall into this trap, and it's a very dangerous trap, that the ego takes over and they start using or imagining that the intuition, intuitive voice, uh, they replace it with the ego and what the mind is telling them. And it's a subtle, it's a very, it's like a, a the difference between the two, it's very subtle. It's something, I'm going to do my best to explain it to you, but it's truly something you're going to have to figure it out for yourself. And it's something that very difficult to explain. If you try to understand it with the mind, it's literally impossible because it's very easy to confuse it with the mind, the thoughts. But if you tune into it and start paying attention, that voice comes from a different place than the ordinary stream of thoughts that you're picking up with your mind or that's where it's being identified or that where it appears to be this one comes from a different place this one really comes from the gut it comes from this area it's not coming from here if i were to put a location to it which is really not exactly the right way but one is really from here and the other one is from this area. They're coming from two different areas. If I was to put a location to it. But that's just a matter of saying it again. So, as you tune in, as you tune in with yourself, as you begin to listen to your heart, as this great shift starts to take place from what the mind tells us that we need to do or the stream of the thoughts which is coming from conditioning from your parents from your society from the culture you're in uh, the region you're in the religion uh, the totality belief system of your community of you should do this or you should do that and da 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 
as that shifts, and that shift happens based on the more you become meditative, the more you're diving within yourself, the more you're working on yourself. And your mind becomes quiet. You're quieting down. So you're disconnecting from this activity. Again, I'm just saying, you know, here because it's easier for me to create this distinction between the two. That's why I'm using it. But neither of them is here or there, okay? So it's just a way of explaining it. That's all it is. So, and this thing is happening all the time, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, it's depending on whether you've been watching the news or what kind of food you ate or whether you got a good night's sleep or or you're taking medications, or whatever is the story, wherever you're at, whatever is happening in your life, um, depends how identified you are with your the utter world, how identified you are with your mind, your emotions. It varies, but this one is is dual thinking. This one is like the battle of two different people in your head. So it's like a dub double-headed snake. On one hand is telling you, do this, do this, do this. And you go do it, and then it comes and beats you up. Why did you do that? You're an idiot. You're so stupid. You never listen. You never pay attention. Again, you did this. So this one is playing this dual character which basically is encouraging you to do something or creating this desire to do something and then on the other hand comes and beats you up or why you did it i use that example some other time it's like you know you get these compulsions or this desire to get some ice cream and then you don't do very well with dairy and you go get your ice cream and now you're bloated and you're very uncomfortable, and now you're beating yourself up why you did it. Or you go out with your friends and you have one extra drink, and then the next day you're having a migraine headache. Now you're beating yourself up why you went out and had an extra drink. So, and we all have dealt with this. We all know this. Or whatever, you make an investment in whatever area and then you, maybe you lose money and, and, or you're investing on a person or, and then the, the, vo the voice comes and beats you up why you did that. Because you're stupid, you don't pay attention, you don't listen, you don't learn, and daddy, 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 daddy. It goes on. But as you're working on yourself, you're on the path, and you're quieting down, you're not so attached and identified with your mind, so your mind becomes, you dive into the witness, the observer, and you're observing the mind, you're observing the emotions, and you're also becoming an obs observant of your body, then a detachment starts to happen. Something detaches. There's like, it starts with a hairline crack in between you and these other three elements. And the crack starts to separate and become bigger. As this shift is happening, it's like a migration from the head to the heart. You're migrating from your thinking mind into, from an analytical mind that is calculative and is conditioned mainly based on fear. You're shifting into the heart and you're coming to the heart of awareness. You're coming to the wisdom. 
and you begin to notice your, we call it like I'm following my heart, I'm listening to my heart. And you beginning to you begin to honor your intuitive knowing. And there's a distinction between these two elements. The voice, the intuitive voice versus the voice of the mind. So you're tuning in into this one. The voice of the mind is analytical. Oh, you shouldn't be going doing this. You shouldn't be investing your money in your spiritual uh, on this awareness because this is not a good time and blah, blah, blah. And, or you shouldn't be going to this retreat or you shouldn't be going on this vacation because it's not a good time to go on a vacation whatever or it's not good time to go buy a new car or go buy yourself a new dress or treat yourself to good day of a spa or whatever is going on but your heart is saying i really want to go and spend the day in the spa and nurture myself and your mind says oh no you're going to have to spend two hundred dollars and you shouldn't be doing this and you should be saving your money but your heart says, I really need it. I really want it. So you start to tune into the heart because it's the language of the soul. And it wants to feed the soul by doing things that supports your well-being, whether it's physical or emotional or it's your psyche, your overall well-being. It makes you happy. It brings you to the things that cherish your soul and nourish your, your being. And the other one is talking about saving money and save retirement and blah, blah, blah. It all comes from fear and it all is related, projected. The fear is being projected into the future. It has nothing to do with nourishing your soul in here and now. And it will continue doing the same thing till you die because it's always been doing that. So you're going to this shift from the head to the heart. From an intellectual understanding and analytical understanding to simply knowing simply the wisdom the great wisdom you're diving into the great wisdom even though at times that it's not wise to spend your money but something inside you says do it and trust so so you're tuning in you're tuning into this. Okay? You're here? Are we together? Yeah. Now, let me give you another example. Let's say um, for example, in the case with our friend Amy, she had a paid vacation to, she was invited, the, the plane ticket is paid for, her vacation is paid for. She goes all the way to the airport to get in a plane to go to New York City. And at the gate where she's about to check in, something inside tells her no. And, and she, she listens to it because she's really tuned in which maybe a year ago she would have not done it and she would have flown to New York City. But this time at the last moment she said, no, I, I, I don't, it doesn't feel right. And so what happened? She turned around, she goes home, she blows off her ticket and her vacation and then she comes to our retreat for nine days. She didn't even know there was a retreat. And then she discovers there's a retreat. It's a free online global self-awakening retreat. 
and she dives into it and boom she goes to this major transformation life transformation all these great ideas come for her she discovers the silent place and she starts operating from this place and all of a sudden the quality of her life changes so or how many times we have encountered or we've been in situations that you're in a relationship it's not functioning well you're comfortable but it's not serving you you're with a partner who's rude or verbally abusive or physically abusive and then you're really it's it's rotten it's over but you're afraid to break away your heart is telling you get out get out stop it but you just don't get out of it because it's comfortable maybe you have children maybe financially you feel insecure but you're hanging in there and your partner keeps beating up in your head i'm not talking about physically but they're very abusive they're rude to you and we had this this is a scenario that happens a lot and even though later on you may come to me and tell me like it's been like five years that I knew it's over and I need to get out and I didn't follow my intuition I didn't follow my knowing and I s stuck in there and I suffered and then finally you get out of it but you learn a great valuable lesson and that lesson is to really listen to your heart listen to your intuition does this sound familiar to any of you now this is happening not i'm just not saying necessarily it's the relationship but how many times, for example, you've been overpowered by this figure, your dad? I mean, I had thousands of people come and tell me that, that, yeah, my dad was telling me, you have to do this, you have to do that, you got to marry this person, or you have to go to medical school, but I'm an artist, and I wanted to be painting, or I wanted to be playing music, or I really wanted to do my own thing. But from the fear of my dad, I wouldn't speak up uh, and follow my heart. And years after, then you learn about listening to your intuition and speaking your truth. Or you're working somewhere and you have an abusive boss and they're, they use abusive language or they're bullies and you don't stand up to them and telling them your truth because you're afraid fear of losing your job or fear of really standing up to them there's you know from major stuff to very minor things that we don't follow our hearts and we don't listen to our intuition and as you tune in it takes tuning in as you trans go to this transition of the head to the heart you hear the language of you tune into the language of the heart you begin to because again I said it comes from a different place your intuitive knowing the language of your intuition is coming from a different space than the mind so the more you tune in the more the mind becomes quiet the more you can hear this voice inside you that comes from knowing it comes from spiritual knowing comes from spiritual wisdom it's 
the wisdom of the great greatness that speaks through you, that message you. This is the voice of your inner guru that takes time for us to tune into that language. We do have the inner guru. The problem is that majority of us don't know the language of the inner guru. We we don't know the language. So that's why existence provides utter guru. A guru comes from the outside. A teacher comes from the outside. Whether it's permanent or it's short term, it doesn't matter. Whether it's for you for a period of time till you reach certain spiritual maturity and then you can tune in you understand, start learning, because a true guru, a true teacher will force you, will direct you inwards to yourself, invites you to go in a journey within, to recognize yourself, to tune into yourself. Because ultimately, you are the one who you're looking for. The great wisdom is within your own self. All the answers that you're looking for is in yourself. Everything in this life that you are looking for of value is within your own self. You already carry that within yourself. However, we are looking for it in the utter world because the way we've been brought up, because our parents didn't teach us this, because we, our school system did not teach us this kind of things. These kind of things to them is bullshit. It's nonsense. It's fantasy. It's meaningless. So if you're in a religious family, they take you to the church or mosque or whatever and they w make you worship and believe in something, God who is punishing everyone, instead of looking for God within, within and tuning into the greatness of the being within yourself. You see that? Do you see what is going on? Do you get an idea now? Yeah? You're here? Cool. So, the more you tune in, the more you honor your intuitive knowing, the more you honor your truth and you speak your truth, And as you work on your mind to quiet down, the more you hear this language, the more you understand it. And you come to your power because you may stand up in front of your father, yeah, 30, 40, 50 years gone by, but now you stand up to your father if he is rude to you or he's bullying you, even though it's super frightening and you say father I, I love you I need to tell you my truth and I am not going to submit to what you're saying no no longer accept this I don't accept this language I don't accept your behavior or to your mom or your boss or whatever you stand up even though the co the price is you may lose your, your job, but you are standing up to them, honoring yourself, because something inside you is telling you no. And you're listening to that language. You're tuning into that language. Or something inside you tells you, 
go to this teacher or go to this leader or go to this health food store or go to YouTube and type in look for I don't know whatever health condition you may have or whatever something keeps telling you if you tune in I have it like a lot of times I can hear something is saying call your friend call James call da 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 call Susan I keep hearing it call her call her call her and you know in the beginning maybe I, or call your mom or go see your mom or call do something whatever reach out to someone and I keep hearing it throughout the day and the second day and the third day and I've learned like when it just goes beyond a day or two and I keep hearing this and I call this friend or someone whatever is the situation I contact them and they say you know Zaratustra I've been thinking about you or I've been really wanting to reach out to you or thank you for calling me I really needed this phone call because I've been so depressed or I've been thinking about killing myself or you just showed up like an angel or really needed this uh, because you're you're listening to this voice inside yourself you have tuned into it this is different than the mind and it leads you to the right place always because it comes from the great wisdom it leads you to the right action it leads you to the right speech because again it comes from the great great wisdom anybody has any questions uh mr amir's chat box open today Anyone has any questions or uh, uh, Hilda? Can you, is the chat box open? Can you write something? Yes, it is. Okay, yes, good. It is. All right. Okay. So, does anyone have question? Feels like sharing something or talk about this? You can either wave at me and I unmute you, unmute yourself and no, nothing, nobody, okay, oh, okay, hi, Britta. Hi, Darcy, um, it resonates, it resonates very much with me, uh, everything you have said today. And it's, I guess it, it's, it's like the unifying principle of um, when I'm in the heart versus the head, as you explained it so much, uh, the, the, the chit chat subsides and the listening, when the listening is there and the quiet is there. Uh, the wisdom follows, uh, and I guess it's to remain in that situation, um, especially with people, or as you say, watching the TV or the external things. Um, the cure to success would be to be able to retain that position constantly, irrespective of what's going on around. Uh, to maintain the, the, the stillness within. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I, yeah, I mean, are you saying sharing with me your thoughts or you're asking me a question? That part I don't, I, I don't get. I was just sharing... Uh, um, your your understanding. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I suppose you could, I could ask a question uh, um, 
is it is is it the effort one puts in, or is it the, the karmic development of the individual? Are we at certain stages of our life? Hmm, I don't know what word to say. Designed to progress to whatever, or a part of it is a mystery. But I do understand the the, the situations you're talking about, and I certainly experienced them. But um, you know what total power we have over it, I don't know. Is there a karmic state to it? I guess it would be the basis of my question. In so let let me see if I understand. Uh, is there a karmic? Destiny to to what? To coming to your intuitive knowing and speak your your truth and listening to your intuition. Is that the question? Not to just listening to it, but to to get uh, to achieve full enlightenment. I guess, which is where we're all sort of heading towards. Yes. Or to be in that state constantly. I mean, that's what we're sitting here about. Right. Okay. Let me. All right, so now we're talking about something different. We're talking about enlightenment and being in that state constantly. Um, for the spiritual seeker, which I have experienced that for years and years, is the idea of awakening means that you're going to be in this really groovy state of really feeling bliss all the time based on the stories we heard from Christ consciousness or Krishna or Buddha or all these spiritual, great spiritual beings that we have heard about and we identify with and we, we enjoy. Whomever, Saint Germain, uh, uh, the Archmichael angel, or I don't know, whomever you really feel connected with, people that maybe we commonly know or people I never heard of. Um, anyway, that stories that they've been in this great love and they're just in this bliss all the time. So when you're on this side, you are thinking, assuming that, wow, when I get there, I am in this place and really feeling amazing and da 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 da. But when you cross the line, it's going to be in the absence of who you thought you were. So that person who was experiencing separation and was looking for this great amazing love is no longer there. So when the sense of separation disappears, in a way there is, is in the meantime, in a, this is a way of saying it, there's no one there to enjoy it because there was never a separation to begin with. The separation was illusory. So when it disappears, nothing's really happened. It's just... It was never anything separated to begin with. So it's really not what you think it's going to be. Um, but no, I, I think, I'm sorry, the constant state of yes. no mind. Yeah, the constant state of no mind. And I can really right now give you a taste of it. But but ultimately it doesn't matter what i say because at the end of the day you're not going to believe it and i promise you that i know that 100 percent. but right now i can give you a taste of it if you like yes please. okay all right so this is it you're here and you're not engaged with anything mentally or emotionally you're simply here. And that's what I said earlier today. I said, just sit back and, and just go one step back into this place of simply being here without any engagements with anything as far as having an, having an agenda. 
that I need to meditate or I need to feel blissed out or I need to quiet my mind, I need to be in my heart. It's like you drop all the agendas and simply in this moment you're here. No, I have to get food for you. You can come back. You can come back. Including that. Okay? That's what it's going to be like. It's not going to be, it can be this big bang, but that's an experience. But your constant state of awakening is that there is no engagement. It simply is. If engagement happens, it happens in a moment and then it disappears. There's no continuation of it. But it's a... That's why I say a lot of times you're already there and when you're not involved with story of your own story or story of the world like we got to get rid of Donald Trump and we have to get him out of the office or we or we got to we can't let Biden to win or what is happening in the world is not right and it's going the wrong direction. These involvements with life, these ideas we have that how things should be or how your own life should be or how your spirituality should be, all of the ideas and you, dis you have disconnected from the ideas and you have disconnected from your mental stream of thoughts. And so you're here simply in a state of being, in a state of natural being, and so when this enlightenment happens, you're, you're going to be in this natural state of being all the time. It's not a big bang. Well, I was in the, yeah. Right. Before. Yeah. Stable state. A, exactly. It's just, it's a, it's not personal anymore. It's an, it's a impersonal event that happens. Nothing has changed in the world, yet everything has changed for you. So, yeah, in this, in this place that you naturally go into it at times, it's in the absence of your thinking mind, because it's in your thinking mind that you're involved with things. Because it's an idea of what is going on in the world is right or wrong. But when you go into this enlightenment place, everything is exactly the way it needs to be. Nothing needs to be different. Because nothing is separated from you. It's all perfectly being revealed. So you lose this engagement of the idea of things should be different because God doesn't know what God is doing, creation doesn't know, and obviously you know a lot more than the Creator, so things should be your way. You lose that. You lose that part. So now you're in your natural state all the time. And that doesn't mean your natural state all the time. 
it doesn't mean if someone breaks into your home or an idiot comes and fixes your roof, today you spend $3,000 on the roof and three days after it falls, the roof falls and they didn't do a good job, now you're pissed off and you're angry at them and you're yelling at them on the phone, that also is a part of it. So yeah, you're engaged with something in a moment, but you're no longer dwelling in this place of this world is screwed up and it should be according to your image of an idea of how it should be. You're in this place that's not engaged anymore in that sense. And also you're in this place that you're not dwelling in your past. And you're not bringing past stuff, projecting it in your future. So you're free from it. Completely free from all of it. And yeah, you remain an observer of this life. You see things come and go. Things appear and things disappear. But you don't have any judgment or any story about it that it should be different. It's surrendered to what is. Hence, you're free. And you experience this. The state of enlightenment, it's you experienced it. There are moments in your life for everybody, whether you're on spiritual path or not, that you are in this place. You are in this very relaxed space. You're just totally relaxed. Yeah? Have you been relaxed in your life? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Do you do anything for it to be relaxed or you're just relaxed? Um, I would say I relax naturally, but if I was tense about something or other, I would make it yeah, you're relaxed, you're relaxed naturally, correct? Right, so that's exactly what I'm pointing out to. For that, you don't have to do anything, it's just something that happens, with something that is, that you are relaxed naturally, without an effort, and if something tense happens, then you try to relax, but there are times in your life that you're simply in this place. And there's no story about it. I need to be enlightened, I need to da 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 da, I need da da da, I need to change this. If I find my lover and my partner of life, then everything is good. You're just simply chilling out and you're just relaxed and you're not engaged with any stories. And that's the moments that, that's the glimpse of awakening. In those moments you are awakened, fully, fully awakened. That is a permanent awakening state. And yeah, that... It's not, it's not getting, it's being in the present and uh, without expectation, but responding as things are revealed to you. Exactly. You, and you... Being with that, but not planning the, the future. I, I like when you said uh, not be thinking of the past or the future, I'm certainly guilty of that. You know, so that's interesting. So you need to leave that also to the present moment and to respond to what comes up or what is revealed as your life is revealed. Yeah, there, yeah, exactly. And let me tell you something. I mean, there is nothing wrong to go into your, your, your past events to derive some information from it. So, you, you reach out to your, to your past memories to say, let me remember, I, I knew how to put this equipment together. I've done it before. So you're thinking about, how did I do it last time? 
So you're der deriving that information and you put it back together. There's no problem with that. It's like never ever go to your past. Don't use any experiences. It's functional for the moment. Yeah, but but we have to. I'm presuming we have to use our brains as well as we go on in life. Well, God ga God gave you the brain and the mind. You might as well use it for something. You know. Yes, but relax in the present and 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 to what is being revealed. Respond. Yeah, you you have this great great device, the great equipment, great thing at your disposal, but what happens is since we are not educated correctly, it's a lack of education. So what happens is the mind becomes the master. And you start suffering greatly because you have this unbelievable thing at your disposal but you have zero training of how to use it so it's running loose on its own and it does whatever it wants to do and there's nobody there to direct you and teach you what is it you have to do so what happens is it's naturally is out of hand so it's either in the past or it's in the future and it's projecting all the time because future is simply a projection of the past that's all it is it's non-existent there it's there's no existence to it the only thing that exists is now so Yeah, well, because you can't be anywhere else, even if you try to. Yeah, but our, 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 our college and school training and that tends to be so mind-oriented. We have to get back to the nature, or, or relax back into Yeah, nature. exactly. Yeah. We have to unclutch, and that's a part of this work. For example, the Self-Awakening Mastery Workshop that we're going to have is to design to master your mind to understand this great device thing phenomena that is at your disposal and is running loose and has become your master and creates suffering where you need to be the master of it and it becomes a great servant because it does serve you it's got great potential under someone who's trained to how to use it it's like you got this beautiful brand new mac macbook computer but you have no idea how to use it so somebody needs to teach you how to use it but once you know how to use it, you can do enormous amount of different things with it, from photography to videography to art to communication to accounting to live streaming to, to you can call phone calls from the you have the li library of Alexandria at your disposal in a little box which called computer you can get any information you want you can go on youtube and teach yourself literally anything that possibly you can learn and it's all there you can learn about history you can learn about science space sex tantra meditation engineering how they b build bridges how they they dive under the, sc the water to fish. I mean, every, anything you want is there. But you have to know how to use it. So, very, thank you. yeah, go ahead. So, surrender to what is presenting naturally uh, in, in silence with some discernment, I presume, for if it involves other people, etc. Don't dwell in the past. 
respond to what is. Yes. Part of your spirit or your soul or your heart. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And all of that begins, all of it is through the transformation and from the head to the heart. Going from analytical thinking into simply being. And that we learn how to go beyond the mind, how to dive into the silence. As you're diving into the silence, as you're becoming quiet, as this transition is happening, the other one is revealing itself. So then you learn how to manage the mind, but first you have to go beyond that. Because you can't use the mind to manage the mind. It doesn't work that way. So I can sit down here and re and like a parrot repeat to myself, I need to do, I need to be positive. I need to be positive. I need to think positively. I need to say things positively. Well, it won't work. It just does not work. You have to go beyond that. Exactly, yeah. exactly, uh, yeah. Quiet, in, in, integration point of the total body and spirit. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're welcome, brother. You're welcome. Um, you're welcome. But I, I deeply appreciate that. That's been very helpful because um, I do have a busy mind. Or I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I was trained mind-oriented, but I've been working on myself clearly for quite a while so that's helped to to uh, give me the framework so thank you yes you're welcome brother and you know to your the the more advanced you get the more you realize that even this mind is it's just simply thoughts passing and they have no power in this act of ownership of it, that's where the problem starts to appear. But the thoughts, the mind, is just an appearance. Something is appearing. It's an appearance of a phenomena that appears. And it's called thoughts. But... The one who's observing it, if it doesn't give any importance to it. It's simply a phenomena, it's simply a, a flock of birds are traveling into the sky. It has zero importance, it's nothing. The great sky doesn't care that the thoughts are traveling through it, the, the birds are traveling through it. It's a non-existing phenomenon. Nothing is really happening. You can't register your thoughts. There is no trace of your thoughts. All these thoughts you have thought about, where are they? Show me your thoughts. You've been thinking, or anyone, not, I'm just not saying you. All these years you've been thinking, where is it? Where are they? So that's what I'm saying. Our education, th that's why so many times I keep repeating myself and sharing with you, you have to let go of all the ideas you have. you got to get empty and come to this place that I really don't know anything. Okay, now the great master teach me. I don't know anything, especially spiritual ideas. And just learn from there. Because the great one, the greatness will, will pour it in. But we have all these ideas and then we get more filled up with the ideas. 
So the cup is full. You know, I put this cup in here and it's this much full. There's no room. There's very little room to put anything else into it. You got to get, get it empty. Because just use a logical example. How much this spiritual understanding or knowledge that we have accumulated helped us? Where are we? Where are you now? I want to read something to you from Lightning Notes of Zarathustra. Okay, it came straight. Page one, 130. It, and it's perfect. It just showed up. Where are you now? So you did the 90-day inner awakening course with Nithyananda. And you can even levitate. You did the medicine journey with the Peruvian shamans in the Amazon. The 10-day vipassana in Himalayas with the Tibetans. The Kunlun teaching training, the yoga teacher training, received the special hug from Amaji, the seven-day chakra clearing and five-day cord cutting course, Osho's 21-day mystic rose, Prembaba's ABCs of spirituality, the Hawaiian kahuna's secrets of unlocking hidden powers, as well as smoking chillum with the sadhus in India. You had your various initiations, changed your name and shaved your head, you made peace with your inner child and had major breakthroughs with Tony Robbins. You even went to a few of Zarathustra's fifth dimensional quantum healings. You have become a vegetarian and you're working your way to become a breatharian and you have been able to practice celibacy. I must say, I am very proud of you and very impressed. You have accomplished a lot. Still, I have one simple question for you. Where are you now? Where are you now? Why are you still a mess? Why are you so worried about what's going to happen in the world? Why are you so concerned? How come you can't manage your mind? How come you're, you're still a victim of your mind, your emotions, and all of that? I put myself in there because I'm also making fun. I'm bringing all these great teachers and I put myself in there so I'm not excluded. So we're adding all these medals. Okay, I got this certificate. I've done that thing. I've done that thing. I'm, I'm a master of this and then I did master of that. I got my Reiki mastery. I got the blah, 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 blah. But then... Why are you still a mess? Where are you now? What have you accomplished? Why still worried about everything and scared of this and that and worry about the future of the world? Or Because we have not discovered inner peace. We have not dove into the greatness of the being. We have not gone beyond the mind into silence. Hence, we're suffering. So all these metals don't do anything for us. It's just as simple as, as, as it is. I'm not saying these courses are good or bad. If they lead you to the greatness of who you are and they bring you to this place of inner peace and inner silence and dive into the observer recognition of 
the observer, the one who is still and here, and simply is watching, but it's not involved with what is watching. It's simply a spectator. It's like going, I had this conversation with a friend of mine last night. He came over, we went to dinner, and he was saying, what do you think is going to happen after the election and, and uh, blah, blah, blah. And I think it's going to open up and everything's going to be fine. And da, 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 da. I said, I don't know. I'm just curious and interested to see what's going to happen. Well, what do you want it to happen? I said, I want it to happen whatever is going to happen. I'm indifferent, completely indifferent to it. Well, don't you care about da 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 I said, yeah, I do care, but I'm surrendered to right now. Right now is the only reality I have. It's this moment. I can't go anywhere else. Sometimes I try to go a month ahead of me to see what are we going to do or as far as the direction of, of my mission, but that's as far as I can go. I get a headache. If I try to go a little bit further, I get a major headache. It's like I can't go anywhere. I am here. It doesn't mean I'm stupid and I don't think about things and I just have to wait here till I have to stay in Titanic till it starts really diving under the ocean before I do something about it. But I can't go anywhere in my mind. I can't go in the future. I can't go to the past. Here is the only reality I have. And here is perfect. Whether it goes in my way or it doesn't go in my way, it doesn't matter. Here is perfect. There's nothing wrong with here. And this is the only reality I have. Here is perfect. The rest is the projection of the mind based on our conditioning of how life should be, how spirituality should be, how things should be. That's conditioning. Or human preferences. Yes, I prefer warm weather over cold weather. That's my preference. That's my DNA genetic makeup. I like warm weather, warm climates. I like colors. I like fashion. I like decorating. I like pristine places, certain kind of food, certain kind of style. Those are preferences of the body-mind mechanism. These are your DNA genetic makeup of what you like and what you don't like. But I don't have an idea about how life should be. Life is fine the way it is. I leave that to the creator of the creation. That's none of my business. I'm just passing through this dimension. I'm here for a few days and then I'm gone. It's none of my business. This administration of the world is someone else's business. Thank God it's not my business. I'm just passing through it. This movie of life, this drama of life, I'm simply watching it. I'm a spectator. That's all I am. I'm watching the movie of life and there's a character in this movie of life called Zarathustra and he's doing his thing. Seven, other, seven billion people are doing their thing. And this guy is doing its thing. It's a movie I'm watching. The movie's already made. And it's being projected on the screen. I have nothing to say in this movie. 
somebody else wrote the screen, somebody else directed it, produced it, and then they're broadcasting it. I'm simply watching a movie. And if you want to be free, you have to remember where you're at. You have to come back to your seat. Otherwise, you will suffer. As simple as that. Because you get identified with the movie, with the Maya, and you think it's real, and it's unfair, and there's a lot of things screwed up in it. And it will result in your suffering. You're the only one who's going to suffer. Nobody else cares. Anyone who doesn't suffer is not involved in it. And those who suffer, they suffer. It's, it's your journey. If you don't want to suffer, then and you come to me and you ask me, Zaratustra, what can I do not to suffer? Then I'm pointing out to you what to do. But I don't have an agenda to come and really shake you or, or force you or try to sell my idea of the way I live or what I think to you, really convince you or convert you that you have to be this way. I'm sharing with you how I came to this and how I live my life and I how it happened that I don't suffer anymore. There are other people who have come to this place too and they can share with you their methods of what they did. It's out there. You just go the direction that feels good for you. But if you're suffering then you're very involved in the story called the world. And if you come to me, I share with you how I freed myself. And it's your choice whether you want to do it or not, because you're the one who's suffering. It's very simple. Don't make it complicated. Anything else? Anyone else you want to share the last thought before we come to the end of our academy? I wanted to ask you, what do you think if we increase the academy to two hours? It's one one hour, 45 minutes, and uh, whether we should bump it to two hours or keep it at 145. Two hours? Yeah, okay. Well, if you want to write to me later. and Because my concern is for those who are in Europe. Because we, we start... Uh, when is your time changing, by the way? Because pretty soon... Um, we are changing uh, this weekend, actually. The coming weekend. Okay, so very soon, our 10 o'clock is going to be our 6 o'clock. Right? Our 10 is going to be your 18. And that's going to be even better for you. Because it won't be so late. Yeah. Okay. So we do have a couple of events coming. And that's going to be our Shamanic Healing Circle on November 12th. And then... I have my self-awakening mastery workshop on November 13th, 14th, and 15th. So if you feel drawn to it, go ahead and go on my website, go to the calendar event, click on that event, and it will take you to the page, and you can register there. If you're in Europe, you have a hard time figuring things out, You're welcome to contact my dear 
sister, friend, Hilde Evenstadt, and she will assist you and help you with everything. If you're interested in getting information about my life training program, which is a private coaching, it's a one-on-one -on -one training program that I've created, then you can write to me at Zaratustra, info at Zaratustra.tv. That's my email, info at Zaratustra.tv. My website is Zaratustra.tv. And uh, podcast, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter address is Zaratustra 5D. Our podcast is pretty much updated. It should We should have everything in it. Uh, probably a bunch of it Amir has already put uh, a lot of stuff has already gone there but I'm sure by the end of this week it will be or by mid next week it will be completely updated with all of our events all the uh, 5D Academy uh, events we've had and the uh, the global self-awakening retreat so um, and we do cut the meditations out of it. So it's basically the teachings. So if you feel like it, go ahead and subscribe to the, po to the podcast. As well as the YouTube channel. I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at the Academy. Sending you lots of love and light. Blessings. And stay in your heart. Just stay here. Dive here. Dive in this place. Just be quiet. Practice being silent. Take time. Go into nature. Just be with yourself. And dive into the greatness of the being, which is available to you at any time and any moment. Always. It's here. The presence. And the more you dive into your heart, the more you come to this place of presence, the more love, equilibrium, balance takes over your being. Especially in these times that there's a lot of news, there's a lot of blah, 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 there's a lot of mind agitation, a lot of fear, worry, anxiety about the uncertainty of the world. And it's very easy, the mind, to get activated. It's very easy for us to be thrown off of balance. But when you dive back within yourself, everything quiets down. So meditation is a very powerful tool to the path of self-awareness. We do have uh, currently three meditations on my website. They're visualization meditations you can use. We're adding up a few more. Or just go online and type meditation on, on YouTube and there's a lot of wonderful meditations or there's meditation apps you can use on your phone from a number of different people. And they will relax you and they bring you back into your own center. And it will help you disconnect from the noise. And you remember the truth of who you are. And you come back to your own power. You begin to feel the love which is here this greatness of the being, remembering the being. So you're no longer in this place of separation. You're no longer in this place of fear and feeling insignificant and just like shaking and being afraid of what's going to happen to me. And you remember who you are. You remember that you are that. You're the vastness. Not this little itty bitty, needy, afraid, frightened, panicked being who's defenseless. You're not this thing. 
You are the vastness. You're way, way more powerful and bigger than what you're imagining to be. And for that, you have to go beyond the mind and you have to dive into the inner silence for it to reveal itself. And that is easy to do if you spend some time by yourself in silence. And if you can go to the nature, nature will reflect back to you the truth of who you are. Because at the presence of the great nature, it's very difficult to go into the mind. The nature will overpower that. And it will reflect back to you who you are. Okay. See you next week. Be well. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next week. And feel free to make comments and send us your feedback uh, if you feel so, feel like it. God bless. Bye bye.